Hello everyone, Shadefire here, and welcome back to Metro Exodus. It's been a little while since we made our journey across post-apocalyptic Russia, and then as we made our way through the fall of Novosibirsk, but now we have the second DLC, Sam's Story, and probably the final DLC unless they decide to do something else later, which, unlike the first DLC, is an epilogue sort of thing, since it takes place after the end of the main game. Get in here, Sam's story. Determined to find out if his loved ones are still alive back home, Sam bids farewell to the Aurora and her crew and takes the railroad as far east as he can, hoping to find means of crossing the Pacific in the port city of Vladivostok. The last leg of his journey, though, proves to be quite a bit trickier than expected. So, in case you forgot, Sam was the American among the crew of Rangers, the one voiced by Steve Blum. And now we're taking him across the rest of the country to Vladivostok on the east coast. Da -da, overwrite the autosave. So yeah, this takes place after they found my friends. It's hard. Their home at Lake Baikal. But for them, the colonel's death signaled the end of their journey. And the beginning of a new life on the shores of Lake Baikal. For me. Loss became a threshold between the order and my own life, between duty and my dream to see Dad again. And like Artyom before, I chose to pursue my wild dream. I was kind of curious the if way, they would confirm. I sometimes felt that the trees, ruins, and leaning wire posts vanishing behind were just an endless movie reel projected onto a ragged screen just for me. Lonely late night viewer in an empty theater. If they would confirm which ending was canon. Yes, every morning. The sun rising dead ahead brought another change of scenery. Making sure that I was, in fact, getting closer to the Pacific. So he just literally drove the rest of the way in that shitty van from Novosibirsk step at a time, slowly but steadily, no matter the obstacles on the way. Actually, I guess that van came from the desert. One day, <laughs> sitting in a recliner on my dad's porch, I might actually be tempted to start a book about this trip or something. One day, but not here, not now. I see the town that's to become my springboard for a leap across the ocean, and I smell salt in the air. If there really is even a slight chance of me ever getting home, I will find it here. So I'm expecting this DLC to be a bit longer than the last one. I mean, it's not always the best metric, but the size of this DLC is about 7 gigs, and the first DLC was only 1.2. So I think this is going to be a more open world level like, you know, the Volga or the desert from the original game, but in the city of Vladivostok, which is also interesting because we didn't really see a lot of cities in Exodus. You can see the city off in the horizon there, so I think we have to make our way there first. Ah, Privet Vladivostok. I also find it a little funny that Steve Blum has had so many games where he you know, does like a, a Russian accented English, and then in this game, set in Russia, he's just the American guy. <laughs> Alright, gotta kinda remember how to play this, but it's not too hard to remember. Okay, what do we got? We got a ass shot, and we've got a kalash with drum mag. We've got one second of filter and one medkit. All right, I have to remember the key thing is that hitting C is not crouch. It is throw your throwing weapon. It's control to crouch. Alrighty, this is looking good. We didn't really get a lot of spring in the main game, you know? I mean, the closest was the Volga, and even that was kind of like very snowy spring. Actually, I guess the... The Taiga? Was it the Taiga? Was the third level? Third big level. Flashlight. Alright. So yeah, I'm 
glad to be back with this. I know some people didn't like Exodus as much as the first two games, but I actually enjoyed it most of the way through. I never really felt like it was tedious or anything. You know. Alright. So I guess we're making our way towards a bridge here. Gunshots. That's always a good way to start your entry into a city. But I assume there would be human enemies here. Now, I feel like I mention this every time, but I'm really hoping we see some new mutants. Since we're in a completely different part of the country. It's not like, oh, by the way, there are Nasalis here too. Because that's one thing I can kind of complain about in Exodus. There wasn't that many new mutants. A lot of it was just stuff that we already saw in the metro. Alright, well, that bridge does not look that crossable. Though it might be. It does look physical, though. Meaning that it actually looks like we could walk on it. And it's not just part of the background. Wow. Get lost, you idiots! I don't think he's shooting at us. Sounds like somebody needs a hand. Okay, I don't think we have any throwing knives, so we're not going to be able to sneak up on these bandits. And this is an impassable wall of bush. Alright, can we get up here? <laughs> nope, it just kind of ejected me. I think there's stairs over here. I mean, it's a shame that I still don't get to play this game with ray tracing and maximum graphics, but I'm not really going to spend money on a 2080 just yet. Processor's going to be the first thing to get replaced. Well, the shot's stopped. The classic Metro cutscene door. Don't worry, we ain't gonna kill you. The kingpin wants you alive. And how do you know what he wants? I have my sources. As for you, stop wasting my time and come out. Show yourself so I know where to go. Okay, this is all them here. Much obliged. I don't know if we're supposed to be going, you know, non-lethal here. But I guess in Exodus, you really only were penalized for killing I surrendering enemies. Come up here and let's talk. All right. Come over here. Let's have a chat. Oh, is this, is this a cable car? Kind of looks like a cable car. Wondering if that might be our way into the city. I will say that the, you know, having only two crafting materials is still not a very interesting kind of loot to get. Since it's pretty much what you get everywhere. One of them's still alive. Hey, put your gun down. Hey, take it easy. I just helped you. Put it down right now. All right. I'm not looking for trouble. I'm looking for a ship that could take me home. You know any good ones? <laughs> we only have one ship here, and she's a looker. Come, I'll show you. Conveniently, Sam found the only captain left in Vladivostok. Wonder, is there any locations we can mark? I uh, don't think so. I don't think any of this is actually physical. Quite a bit of cityscape there, though. Like, it goes all the way across.
Hold on. Let's get a picture of our. Well, now he's can he's in kind of a squat, but so I get a picture of our new friend here. Careful over here. It's a long fall. You don't want to join those poor bastards. They keep chasing me, trying to earn favor with the cat. At least they want to get me alive. Unfortunately, the amazing view up here also does put a little bit of a hit on the frame rate. Get your spyglass. You can see her perfectly from here. She's right over there. Okay, wow. A submarine? It's freaking huge. Nice ticket home. Speaking of your home, where is it? Your accent seems vaguely familiar. Can you... San Diego. Pilot? Damn, another American. A submarine Seriously? by yourself? Talk about coincidence. Another American? Danu! Looks like you really don't know anything. I'll tell you later. Huh? We've got to scram. What the hell is that? The bat wing. Let's get out of here before it gets us. Well, that sounds new. That just looks like a little demon. Is that a demon? Looks like a demon. Sounds like a demon. Except it's got a cloud of babies. Whoa. I'm not really sure what we can do about this problem. I guess if we hit the main body, these will go away. So it's not really new, but he is sort of a bat commander. Let's see if we can get a picture of him while he's close. Nope, can't get that much closer. Well, I could feel the view, but he's also not in a good position right now. Uh. <laughs> really try to get just one in here. No, he's gone. And because I still have the FOV turned up, you can see they still never actually added a proper FOV option. Well, I think we're doing this right. Just shoot him. Oh, I might be able to get him this time. Well, I could if there wasn't a bat in his face, but that's close. So it's not quite a demon. It looks a little bit different. It's a local variety. Actually, the ash shot would probably do better damage when he gets close like that. Don't really know what we can do about these bats, though. Seems like they can just hit us no matter what. And I don't have any more medkits. Okay, there's five med kits in here, so they expect you to take some damage. This is kind of a durable enemy, considering we're at the beginning of the game.
like how they just reused Artyom sounds there instead of Sam having damage sounds. Alright, well, we stabbed in the neck, but it's still going. So much better. I feel like we'll be seeing that thing again. I mean, that was a decent way to open up, though it did go on a little long for what it was. Is that a... It's a tiny frog. We have to get a picture of these. <laughs> Those were not anywhere else we went. I mean, if you've seen my main LP, you know that taking pictures of things is a thing I'm going to do. But man. Forgot. The camera modes that have come out in other games since this one first came out are so much better. Oh, no, there we go. I guess I was stuck on the ground, and that's why I couldn't really freely move. Man, yeah, it just looks like a regular, non-mutated toad. The Vladivostok is a pretty major military port, so you'd think it would have gotten nuked pretty heavily. Those are really loud splashes. Oh, I think I killed a toad. <laughs> I'm sorry, you ran under my boots. That's not even a door. Alright, well, I guess we'll just look for the captain. I don't suppose we have a map of the area. Oh, we kind of do. So it looks like there is a location right in front of us. But I wonder, are we not even going to go into the actual city? I'm trying to, like, figure out where this DLC is going to go. More baby shrimp. Ugh. Oh. That is a snake. It's a snake with legs, like that one we saw in the desert, which I think was the only snake that we got to see up close. Here is the other end of the cable car station. Hands in the air! <clears throat> Come and take it, you bastards! Come and take it! You're coming with us! Take him alive! Take this! I'm wondering why they're all apparently only armed with pipes. I mean, Sam is both an ex-soldier and a ranger, so presumably he knows how to fight. No. Better than even Artyom does. Yes, we couldn't win that fight. Fuck off. And I'm gonna guess that was the last time we'll ever see our shiny collage. Did you hear him swear when we got him? Fuck you all! Bastards! I kill you! That's American for sure. 
How do you know it's American when you're not that good at Russian? Well, I did hear American in the movies before the war. He could have seen some too. By the way, he's up. Hey, where are you from, pal? From Moscow. Look, aren't you an American, pal? <laughs> no, I'm a Buryat. You got me. I am an American. The last American. <laughs> there you have it. No shit. Duh. <laughs> no wonder you gave us so much trouble before we met. <sighs> it's just not my day. Moi din sagudnya. Looks like it. Well, you might still change your opinion. Hey guys! Turns out we caught an American! We better call Cat Down Report! This is also the weird thing where they're like. Delivery. Presumably, they're all speaking Russian right now. But then, sometimes Sam will also be speaking English, and them not understanding him. So that's always a weird thing when every language is just filtered as English in a setting. I do. It's clouds. <laughs> clouds! This is a storm, pal! Yep, a storm. And storms here are not your regular storms. They can ruin your day like nowhere else. You're lucky we took you in when we did. Delivery. The boss is back on the bridge. Switching over. Got it. I think the DLC description did say that Vladivostok is... Tsunami flooded. He got spooked by some small fries. We know the guy was with him, though. Turns out the guy's an American. <laughs> Please, boss. He's more like you on a bad day. Oh, I see. Uh, pass the radio to that American, William. Our fellow American Tom. Okay, I've got a stupid reason considering this shit, but just in case, who are you? Lance Corporal Samuel Taylor, U.S. Marine Corps. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I have trouble believing it myself. Here, change the plan. He is my guest. Do you get that? Uh, bring him over, quick. Yes, boss. Well, didn't we make a splash? Not tell me. Who of us knew he was an American all along, eh? <laughs> wow. Yeah, that seems like a very large sub for just the captain to pilot. Impressive. Look, it's the boss. Nothing says American like an umbrella. Somehow I take it though he's not exactly interested in going back to America himself. Then you get chewed up for acting on our own. Yeah, there's just no making the cat happy. It's not our day. <laughs> Definitely not the exact setup I was expecting. We've arrived. Come aboard. That we get taken in like this. Alright. Well, there's the sub. I know it's like a minor detail, but I love that the rain makes that exact, like, metal pattering on sheet metal. Mayflower. USS Mayflower, so it's an American sub. I wonder if Tom here was from the crew. It is really funny to me that they have umbrellas. It's just, they're such a not post-apocalyptic thing. Like, intact umbrellas. <laughs> Let me just unscrew the light bulbs while I go. Oh, 
I'm coming, but I'm not allowed to sprint at this part. Follow me, let's talk. So, where did you want to go? San Diego, one way. California, <laughs> oh truly, a heaven on earth. Uh, save for the traffic in LA, of course, that was hell. <clears throat> Look man, uh, remind me, what was the name of your baseball team? Padre. See if we can get in here on this, uh, well, I was gonna say this, Young American fella, but he's really not that young. Kind of leathery looking. Right. Oh, our team used to play them often. I'm from Seattle, you know. <sighs> Mariners, if you think any further check is in order. Nothing personal, Lance Corporal. These are tough times. You don't know how many people pretend to be Americans trying to get on my of ship. Of course. Trust but verify. Exactly. Oh, so there's the new gun. They said that Sam brought it with him. Oh yeah, this is the uh, 1911. Of the applied force department of my business here. Hello, Sam. Is that an M4? Alright, let me take a seat and get interrogated. Clem's boys couldn't invite you or here not. at a better time. The doctor flexed the wind somewhat, but still, just look at that. Yeah, had I stayed there, I'd be halfway to Kansas by now. Not that I want to go there. <laughs> Where do you want to go? <laughs> Though wait, uh, how about we have a good smoke and hear your story first, Sam? Won't say no to a smoke. Even though there isn't much of a story, really. Middle East, Afghanistan, then Moscow. I was on the embassy guard detail. Happened to be in the metro when shit hit the fan. Quite a lot of people survived there. And then, we just sat in the tunnels for 20 years, thinking we were the last people alive in the world. How come? A perimeter of jammers. The leaders were in the know, but kept it under wraps. For 20 years? But why? Haven't got a clue, really. A friend of mine learned the truth, and with him, the whole squad I was with. We had to run. Across the continent, we had a train. At Lake Baikal, we split. I went further east and kept going until I ended up here. If my dad is still alive, he could still be waiting for my return. He'd be over 70 now. I haven't got much time. You know, if he survived the nukes, the radiation, the chaos... I see. The getting so old. You're looking for someone to take you home. Yeah. People don't just sail across the Pacific nowadays, unlike the old times. But I can take you there on this sub. It's rather cool than Canton. Is this room normally like part of the sub? Because <laughs> I don't I think those windows are standard issue. And how did you get this submarine in the first place? It's a long story. Uh, perhaps just an executive summary? Well, I am in a hurry, but not to such an extent. <laughs> well, in that case, I'll start from afar. I'm gonna take it that he's not Ooh, from the Navy. Way, I almost nailed Tennessee Sour Mash here. No proper aging, of course, but the flavor is basically right. Want you drink with us, Clem? I'll drink my own. They don't really get that fancy stuff, though. <laughs> it was just the first failed batch, you know? Uh, but suit yourself, of course. <laughs> to our meeting. To our meeting. To our meeting. I'm pretty sure we can't oh, trust Tom here, though. Oh, yeah. What did I tell you? So, ready to listen now? I'd been doing business here before the war, mainly on the international weapons market. The locals had lots of money and opportunities, but no connections and style whatsoever. That's where I came in. Klim handled the relations with our local partners. Just before the war, our enterprise was starting to gain momentum. 
But then the bombs fell. You can guess the rest. Yep. Our company had a competitive advantage, though. Warehouses full of weapons. And Klim's boys in charge of guarding those warehouses. So was he an arms dealer, or was he just a... <laughs> then we entered a phase of dynamic corporate. growth. And a few years ago learned of a flourishing settlement here in Vladivostok. The place was governed by the ex-captain you met before. Uh, he did do a decent job of it, I must admit, but was not ready for the ongoing war against bandits. That's what we offered to help with. The captain took the deal and was not disappointed. Klim found a radical solution to the bandit problem. Yeah, you can still see some hanging. He says while looking off into the distance. Right. And then we learned that the sub was operational all along. And the captain never even thought of using this immense opportunity. How was he supposed to use it? So was the captain American then? Obviously, you're not a businessman, but just like considering him, it's an American sub to everyone's benefit for so many years after the war Mankind has been barely holding on to life because there was no force left to unite the survivors in pursuit of restoring the civilization But we we could create such a force a new state the true shining city on a hill to lead the whole world to new accomplishments to turn the apocalypse into a new beginning. We won't even have to shoot. Just drop the anchor in view of any settlement, open our missile ports, and they will readily give us everything. Old men running the world. Oh, do you find this inelegant? It would be just a statement of fact. We are power here. We are the force to lead everyone into the future. Whether See, they like it or not. So, what do the captains say? Oh, he went ballistic and tried to get rid of us. But when he saw his game was up for good, he ran away. Which means you get to decide where to sail now, right? Certainly. There's just one slight problem. The sub's all right, but its reactors need to be refueled. But only the ex-captain knows where to get the fuel rods and can control the procedure. Regrettably, after our falling out, he wouldn't even talk to us no matter what. Yeah. A lot of things starting to make sense. I mean, Vladivostok is the place to refuel us up. Right. Then I can offer you a deal. Sam, I'd like you to be our negotiator. Make that fossil understand. If he helps us get the fuel, we leave the settlement to him. We'll find a better base in no time anyway. Of course, he's also welcome to have all crew members who won't follow me. And once we get the fuel, San Diego will be our first destination. And then we'll take it over. Deal. Deal. Sam, you'll need some protection as our pearly man. I'll send my best guys. Thanks, Clem. But I prefer working alone. A gun would be nice. <laughs> oh, that's some true grit right there. Hey, leave Sam be, Clem. He can handle it. <laughs> Whatever you say, boss. So... We have a deal. I believe that's our gun Still, right there. If you are going to represent us in negotiations, we'd better equip you to our standard. Since hey, that's Clem, the image they show. Sam's radio to pick up our frequencies. Sure. When they were talking Here. about the new gun, that uh, 1911 right there. Now for the important part, the map of the area. It's as exact as it can be, all things considered. Plus, it shows all the captain's hideouts we know of. You should check those first. All right, so I guess now we're going to do a little bit of open worlding. Done. Spasibo, Klim. Well, radio's taken care of. As for the rest of your gear, drop by the shooting range. You'll be issued everything. Have some rest first, though. You had a long day. I couldn't help Thanks, but notice but that rather go now. low frame rate flag in the background. It's hot. <laughs> well, <laughs> your choice. Thanks, Tom. Guess I'll be going now. The storm's already over, after all. Yeah, that storm passed really quickly. Good luck. Compared to how much of they were course. talking it up. Just leave Just leave Bye. Alright. Here's the model of our sub. But yeah, this does not look like a room that you could submerge a submarine with. Like, it's part of the conning tower. As much as a submarine has a conning tower, but... All right, uh, maybe we'll head down to the shooting range and then we'll call it for our first episode now that we've got a little bit of a lay of the land. Why did you not let me send my boys with him? They could catch the old goat cleanly and quietly. Ah, enough. I know you're cleanly and quietly. Your boys fucked up for good when they let him get away. 
The captain himself I could forgive. We're keeping tabs on him. But where's the XO? The others? We're looking. Looking. You've been looking for almost a year now. And now the captain is our only chance. Don't you see? I just can't trust Pretty much this seems like a scenario where we're going to have to kind of play both sides to get what we want. So what? I don't know him. You don't know him either. But I do. He survived in Moscow. He survived there. And then he came here. Well, and that's all you need to know. I certainly do. As enough of this. Do you have anyone watching the passage to the upper mark? <laughs> Observation for two guys. Good. Tell them to be on the lookout for our guest. Provide him support if need be, and tell that to everyone else. That way, we don't need to kill any of his men. Got it. So I take it the bandits at the start. We're not his men. They were just trying to capture the captain to get some favor with him. And then the other guys that we beat the shit out of were his men. Alright. If I was going to have a shooting range in a submarine, where would I put it? Also, we still have that distance counter popping up the bottom right as our autosave. I wonder if that's still counting the distance from Moscow that we currently are. Howdy, Uncle Sam. You're expected at the shooting range. Boss's orders. Boss's it's orders. That way. Cross the bridge. I mean, there's a ship, but I take it that ship is not going to cross the Pacific. Hi, American. Hi, Russian. Okay, I think I got this. Time to check ignition. This is ground control to Major Tom. Nah, your circuit's dead. There's something wrong. <laughs> Damn it. I knew I was forgetting something. Let's see if it works now. I couldn't Engine's remember on. the rest of the lyrics. Okay, there they are. <laughs> you really made the grade. <laughs> no. Oh, come on. I mean, I wasn't expecting a space oddity. Ugh, Reference, you know, Bowie song in there. It's just closed. This why is it closed, man? Closed for range? special service. Ah, I've been expecting you. My name's Daniela. I'm Tom's gunsmith. The boss wants you geared up ASAP, Sam. So I'll cut straight to the chase. First, your universal detector. There are mines all over the ruins, so never leave home without it. Some assholes just drop them everywhere. Parts, weapons, lots of things, actually. Nice. Indeed. So that's now similar to one of the upgrades rifle. we had. This looks familiar, but different. It's a local make, optimized for our home brand of incendiary ammo. It accepts regular ball, all right, just not the standard mags. Don't want our idiots ruining their old rifles with the hot stuff. Thanks. I'll take good care of it. Ah, glad to hear that. I guess you're all set now. You can test it here. My assistant has a couple of mags ready. It does look like it's partially made from M4 parts, and it has that same M4 sight, but presumably that there wouldn't be a lot of working M4s left, you know, 20 years after the apocalypse, since it is such a finicky rifle. Well, not as much as the M16, but still. Alright, so we could modify it. Assault rifle ammo, assault rifle incendiary ammo. Incendiary ammo made by Vladivostok craftsmen and valued for its superior efficiency against mutants. It's prone to fouling the gas systems of regular assault rifles, so it's only used in specifically modified ones. Throwing knives, decoys... I feel like that's new, even though it's just like a can. I guess it's probably a can with a bunch of stuff in it. Hand grenade, Molotov, it's all familiar. I feel like we should maybe make some gra gas mask filters. I don't know, I feel like we might need those somewhere in the city. Um, okay, we've got our helmet. So we didn't really do any of this stuff in the first DLC. There was no real customization. Yeah, so this thing seems somewhat similar to one of the upgrades you could get as Artyom, except it also shows mines. 
This is called the Sammy. So yeah, we don't have any mods for it yet. Here's your ammo. Good luck. And here this is the nine, is not just 1911. It's the real McCoy. A 45 automatic, straight from Tom's premium stock. We have sold quite a few of its siblings here, but this one's been fine-tuned to the max and hasn't seen a day of use past its shakedown. So it won't fail no matter what. Nope. Alright, well, let's give them a shot, see how they go. Don't mind if I do. Try to hit all the targets. Oh, I always wanted to see a real marine action. It's nice. It's got a nice kick sound to it. Nice chunky fire. Not bad. Does that one have blood on it? <laughs> And I'm out of bullets. Oh shit, I missed one. I need more practice with this thing. That was a solid attempt, but perhaps you'd like to try again? Uh, I mean, I'd like some bullets. Need more ammo? Here you go. Nope, he's not gonna give me more ammo for the revolver, or for the pistol. Only six bullets here? Man. I guess we should use the rifle then. All right, we'll give it one more go. Yes, another try won't hurt. I mean, I guess it would make sense that he might have some American guns as a arms dealer type. The kind of stuff you wouldn't see just lying around Moscow. I didn't even see that last target that I missed until I turned back. That one back there that I missed. Real shooting. Is that it? Simplify. Look, what a show. I can appreciate art of shooting like nobody else here. Thanks for the show. <laughs> Thanks. All right. That was truly amazing. Here's your prize. <laughs> Here's our prize. More bullets. All oh, day's work. Nine incendiary rounds. Well, so I guess we'll be I saving won't be those. I you any longer. Good luck, Sam. Friendliest bandits we ever did meet. Actually, I guess most of these are not really bandits. So, did you get geared up? Weapons zeroed in and all that stuff? Yep, everything's fine. Great. Good luck to you then. Alright. So, I guess we'll call it here for the first episode of Sam's Story, and we'll continue right into this next time. Until then, I've been Shadefire, and thank you for joining me in our start to Metro Exodus' epilogue. Take care, everyone.